There's a lot of secrets when it comes to dealing damage in Genshin Impact and this video will address 5 most important steps you need to take in order to become the best damage dealer. There's no such thing as equality when it comes to gacha games like Genshin Impact and this becomes pretty clear once you spend a couple of hundred hours into the game. If you still haven't noticed, the rarity that comes with characters, artifacts and weapons not only means they're harder to acquire, but they also come with hidden perks. For example, any 5 star character will have a higher base attack than any other 4 star character and that's only because of their rarity. Now obviously, there's nothing you can do about your damage if you're playing with a 4 star character, but you can do something about your weapons and artifacts. When you're just starting out, it's completely normal and even recommended to upgrade your 3 star equipment, however, they start to fall off in terms of stats once you're around Adventure Rank 25. At this point, it's necessary to start switching out any 3 star equipment you have with 4 star version, and once you're around Rank 45, it's time to focus on 5 star artifacts. And if you ever get your hands on a 5 star weapon, it's almost always a no brainer choice to upgrade it and use it on your main damage dealer. But the next best choice to go for would be a 4 star weapon instead, since the already start to outperform any 3 star weapon at level 60, and it's not even recommended to level your 3 star weapons beyond this level. In other words, making the switch to higher rarity equipment or even characters will increase your damage since the amount of difference when it comes to raw stats is just going to be on a different scale. A lot of games teach you to only look at stats, but in Genshin Impact, one thing the developers won't tell you is that your level actually matters more than you realize. Besides unlocking new talents and gaining mediocre stat boosts at best, what you're really getting out of your character's level is bigger damage. Each time you attack anyone, there will be a calculation that takes into account both your and the monster's level. So if you're fighting a monster with an underleveled character, you will see that they will be dealing less damage even if they have the same artifacts and weapons without including the base stats from each character. This is why you might I also notice the drop in damage when you go up against monsters in the higher floors of the abyss. On the other hand, you will at least deal more damage once you go down a few floors since if the enemy is lower level, your damage will increase and this is why, if you don't want to challenge yourself too much, just wait until you have few high level damage dealers and clear those time challenges without too much hassle. Just like in many other RPG games, enemies have their own resistances and weaknesses. You can't just take someone like Lee and expect to take out the Pyro Regis line without a significant drop in damage. The same could also be said about characters like Razor who specializes in physical damage but has a hard time taking down rune guards which have a strong resistance against physical attacks. And you will discover that every enemy has some sort of resistance but luckily for us, the game provides many ways to increase your damage by manipulating the resistance stat. Two most easiest ways to do this would be by using Superconduct if your main damage dealer deals physical attacks, or obtain the Verdescent Veneer Artifact set for your Ademo character, which will reduce up to 40% resistance based on the element that becomes swirled during the attack. Also, keep in mind you can reduce your enemy's resistance below 0%, so even if the enemy has, for example, 10% physical resistance, causing the Superconduct reaction will reduce the resistance down below 0%, which will increase your overall damage. And there are, of course, many constellations that can help you further reduce enemy resistances which even includes characters like the Traveler. But nonetheless, taking advantage of lowered enemy resistance will give a big boost in your damage. Building up on our knowledge from the previous steps, the next thing you will improve will be the elemental reactions. And the damage your elemental reactions cause depend on three factors. Your character's level, their elemental mastery and any boosts they get from equipment or constellations. Finally, this damage can only be reduced by enemies resistance, so for example, overload can be reduced with pyro resistance. This also means that elemental reaction doesn't scale with your character's attack, elemental damage bonus or any other things like critical rating, since reactions cannot become critical hits. Following these rules, you will have an easier time building viable support characters since all they need to do is have good elemental mastery and be leveled up appropriately. And remember that elemental reactions only take these stats from the character that caused the reaction, so if you apply Pyro Effect with Xiangling and then Fischl uses her elemental skill, a reaction will trigger and Fischl's elemental mastery and level will determine the damage. Dealing good damage isn't always about bigger numbers. If you want to stay consistent, then looking at things besides equipment and stats can be a good way to improve your damage output. And there's a couple of ways you can achieve this. One is by having a character that can group enemies together, so for example, the Traveler or Sucrose will do this job pretty well. The other way would be by having a Geo character who can create crystal shields so your attacks can become uninterruptible, and you can then just focus on dishing out as much damage as possible without having to worry about the surrounding enemies. But to summarize, 
optimize everything, making the switch to higher rarity equipment, especially weapons, can be a great way to boost your damage, and making sure to keep your level as high as possible will make your fights and faster against enemies, especially those who are lower level than you. And when you're fighting these enemies, always remember each of them have different resistances, so having at least few ways of lowering their resistance will give you an edge in combat. Finally, you can make your elemental reactions do a lot of damage with a lot less investment, especially if you're doing this for your support characters, by simply raising their levels and elemental mastery. Enjoyed the video? Make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon and gently press the like button. Don't forget to check out our other Genshin Impact guides, which also includes a tier list that you can also visit on our website gotchagamer.com. Thank you for watching us.